Mr. Aurora. Hello, what happened to your Ola? Hey, I'm back. Imagine that. Yes, with another math video, with another math lesson, and let's just get started, my friends. My jungle friends, let's do this thing. Okay, I know you're wondering, Mr. Aurora, why do you call us jungle friends? I don't know, just kind of stuck, and that's why I do it. Anyway, let's take a look here. Let me get my magic pan. Come on, magic pan. And look what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be doing subtracting with renaming. Oh, is that the perfect oval that you have ever seen? Yes, bringing it on down. The essential question here basically says, how can you use renaming to find the difference of two mixed numbers? Hmm, a very good essential question I might say here. We need to unlock that real world problem. So let's take a look. It says here to practice for a race, Kara is running two and a half miles. It says when she reaches the end of her street, she knows that she has already run one and five sixth miles. How many miles does Kara have left to run? So I like it's real world. Like, you know, this is really a person out there by the name of Kara who's running on her street. Now, we have some hints along here. We have, it says, underline the sentence that tells you what you need to find. It also says, what operation should you use to solve the problem? In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and let me get another pen here. So basically, underline the sentence that tells you what you need to find. Okay, that's really obvious, right? Because it comes in the form of a question. When somebody asks you, hey, like your teacher, what sentence in that problem tells you what you need? You know right away that you're looking for that question mark. Next, it says, what operations should you use to solve the problem? Well, when you look at that, it says that, you know, to practice for this race, that she's running this distance here. Now, when she reaches the end of her street, she knows that she has that distance covered. And basically is, how many miles does Kara have left to run? First, anyway, we have one way one way says rename the first mixed number. Okay, we did decide that we're subtracting, right? Because we're taking the two and a half miles is the, with the distance, I guess, that she's practicing. I would rephrase that question a little bit, make it a little bit more clear. But then this is a distance that she runs when she gets to get uh, the end of her street. So two and a half minus one and five, six. And the first thing it says is to rename the first mixed number. But step one also says estimate the difference. And it's really, really a good practice to, to do an estimate even before you start any problem. It gives you an idea. But looking at this, this almost looks in half. It seems to me that our answer should be right around one. And I'm taking two minus the one, just looking at that. And a half and five, six are pretty close to the same. I'm just estimating. If I do any more thought where I'm trying to subtract more than that, I'm really not estimating at that point. Okay, now we have step two. Find a common denominator. Use the common denominator to write equivalent fractions with like denominators. It just seems like we've done this before. When we look at this, we have, and I don't know how much they're gonna provide for us here, so let's just take a look here. I guess we'll stop here. So here you can see we have two and a half, and this says, it tells us it's equal to two and six twelfths. Okay, so I think in this problem, basically, it's not gonna equal anything else. I think they're just looking, us, looking for us to rewrite this so that we can meet the problem down below. That would make some sense here. It says step three, rename two and six twelfths as, as a, a mixed number with a fraction greater than one. And we've done that, well, in a fraction greater than one, okay? So think like two and six twelfths is equal to one plus one plus six twelfths, which is equal to one plus twelve twelfths plus six twelfths, which is equal to one and eighteen twelfths, okay? So we're, writing this partly like this, kind of like an improper fraction. Because with this two, the problem here being, the reason why they're having us do this thing here, I could see where this could get a little confusing, is because we have the numerator here of six, and we have a numerator here of 10. Well, we could take the two minus one and say one, but we're gonna run into a problem because we can't say six minus 10. Remember, these denominators are the same. They're both 12s. So normally, if we had a number that was a little bit larger, we'd be able to just subtract the numerators to get our, our fraction. But we can't do that here because the six is smaller. So that's why they're trying to get us to say, well, think of this mixed number that we have here 
as 1 plus 1, which is true because you have 2, plus 6 twelfths, and then just say 1, and then turn one of those holes into twelfths right here. So we have 12 over 12, which is equal to 1. So now we still have our 2 and 6 twelfths. But we're going to rewrite it now as 18 twelfths because 12 plus 6 is 18. Now we have 1 and 18 twelfths. So let's do that. Uh, let's rewrite this. I'm not sure with all the boxes here, trying to put in the right box, but I would say then we could rewrite this as 1 and 18 twelfths. This way, we could just subtract now. This and this are the same. Now 18 minus 10 is 8. We have 8 over 12. And then our, in this case, we actually have 1 minus 1, which in this case, there's nothing there. So it's just going to be 8 twelfths is our answer. For, oh, in the simplest form, we could divide a 4 out of here and get 2. And we could divide a 4 out of 12 and get 3. And this is how we take a fraction and put it in simplest form. This is what they were looking for. Let me see. Let's move on down. 2. And it does say here 2 and 6 twelfths, okay, is equal to, well, in this case, I guess they want us to write this. This is all really falling along. Could go faster, but you know what? I want to make sure you guys understand this. This is find the difference of the fractions. We did that up here. Then find the difference of the whole numbers. Write the answer in simplest form. That was the reason why we had to divide that 4 out of that number. Check to make sure your answer is reasonable. And so here has, uh, we decided 2 3rd mile left to run. Is our answer reasonable? Well, I'd estimated 1. 2 thirds is pretty close to 1. If we were to do a quick little area kind of model here, we could show that this here is 1 third. Here's another. So there's 2 thirds right here. It's pretty close to one. We could always go back and check our work because two thirds then, if we add that two, uh, what was the fraction that we were adding? We had two thirds. If we were to add that to the one and five six, okay, that should get us back to the two and one half, the original number. And here we get ourselves a common denominator again. We already had 12 and then that should work out. I'm going to stop at that. I'm not going to actually figure that out, but you get the idea. All right, and we need to do this as well. And what am I thinking? I'm thinking, hmm, let's see. Um, I'm thinking that one right there. Can you see that? All right, now we move on to another way. We name both mixed numbers as fractions greater than one. We have all these steps here and Okay, so let's go ahead and get another color pen. Let me get, let me get my blue. Feeling blue. All right, so we have two and a half minus, this is two and a half minus one and five six. It says write equivalent fractions using a common denominator. All right, a common denominator of one half and five six is six. And this is true, we could go ahead and do that. So if that's a six then, we know that two times three would equal to 6, so I'd have to multiply the numerator by 3, so I get 3, which let me put 2 and 3 6 over here, and then here we have the exact same denominator, nothing changes, and so we end up with 1 and 5 6. Okay, now, now we come over here, rename both mixed numbers as fractions greater than 1. And again, here we go. If we were to do that, we could say, well, this is 2 which is the same as, well, here's six over six, six over six, and then three six. And I like how they have you renaming that whole so that you really understand that that's six over six. So here we have 12, and then plus three equals 15. So to rewrite this as an improper fraction, they're calling fractions greater than one. That's one way to phrase that. We have 15 six, it's the same over here. We're taking the six plus the five, so we end up with 11 over 6. All right, so this is the other way. Now it says find the difference of the fractions, then write the answer in simplest form. Well, 15, we're subtracting here, so 15 minus 11 is going to equal 4. Ooh, I don't think you go there, do you? Nope. Ah, uh, see, I'm just wanting to solve the problem, and I have all these little boxes I'm always having to fit into. Nothing I'm crazy about, but it is what we are asked to do. Let me get my blue back. So here basically we have the 15 
over six, and then we have the 11 over six. What do you know, four over six in the simplest form? That would be two thirds. Because here we could divide out a two from the numerator. We could divide out a two from the denominator, therefore giving us a new fraction of two thirds. Yes, are we liking? I like it. And I'm liking this too. So keep in mind that this is a letter. Okay, ignore that. And then this follows. I even give you that one too. Okay. And is there more? You know what? Is that the. Oh, we're supposed to put our two thirds over here? Two thirds. Okay, and that's our answer. So I guess I'll be giving you some more here. I guess I'll have to give you this and this. Okay, that you covered, my friends. That ends this video. Congratulations for completing one more. And don't forget, live long and prosper.